Okay, let's talk about uh, work items and image management. When we go to the, um, the image, you can see that we have the option to add work items. Now, this is when you notice that there's something that must be done to fix the image in some way. So let's, uh, let's say we're going to do a color correction here. can move the node around just like any other one. Okay, now that lists this here. It says who created it and when, and then it's waiting for someone to complete this. You'll notice that I now have the option up here to check out the image. So someone can come into the image portal and be presented with a list of work items that need to be completed. And they can look at this and say, uh, you know, I, I need to do this. Have kind of a, like a to-do list. Let's check out this image. And I'm going to check out and download the file. This will download it for me to my local drive. And I would now do just the standard um, you know, image correction that I would need to do. I can open this in Photoshop, make whatever corrections I need. So we'll take care of that. And uh, when this is ready, when we feel that we've made our corrections properly, I can come back in and check in the image. So let's do that. I mark the item that I've completed. Select my option to upload. And now we'll process this image, uh, create a new preview. Uh, it will create a new revision of this file for us. And it will even allow us to uh, view these side by side. Just simply click the original. And here's where those tools uh, get really interesting. I can zoom in on one particular area and it zooms it in both sides. So I can see, you know, was that correction made? We'll pretend that it was. So let's approve that work item. Okay, you can see that that is approved. And again, just to remind you, we have bulk actions that we can do. So one of those was our ability to approve. And now that image is ready for use. Now, remember that we selected this uh, to be part of an editorial. So if I come back to my book plan and I actually look at that, we'll look at that editorial and we will see a new image, or a new section here called images. And it lists all those ones that were associated with it. And if I click this, I can download the image. We also have another tool that is a, uh, a, an InDesign plugin. And this will show the artist who's working on the layout file, the, um, the images that have been completed and are available for use. That this can assist them in placing those files. So I just have to make a box. Select my image and I can place a high res or a low res proxy. 
So let's place our high res. And there it is, ready for use in our layout file. This can be combined, of course, with our other tools, um, our page manager plugin. Um, once the artist has built the pages for a publication, they can then upload those ready-made pages. Okay, as I said, there are uh, various options for uh, working with these in bulk. You can download your completed ones and this will build a bundle for you. So let's say you want to download um, the JPEGs, it will bundle those together and let you download as many as you like. Okay, um, I think we'll leave it at, at that for an overview of images. This is, like I said, an optional module that can be turned on. Um, it is something that it's a, a relatively new item in our, our list of products. And we definitely would be interested in feedback uh, from you and how you see using that or um, additional features that would make it uh, more useful for you. Okay, uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is using snippets. Uh, snippets are a, a very new item that we've added in the book plan, and it's part of the clipboard. So you're used to seeing ads and editorials here, but there's a third drawer now called uh, snippets. And the idea with this is to have a kind of a temporary holding bin where you can move items around uh, as needed. Um, but you might not want to, you might not want to um, handle those moves all uh, at the same time. You may want to save some for later. So it's kind of a, kind of a, think of it almost as like a to-do list um, in a way. So let's just drag and drop here. I've got a, a one page editorial and I've got a ad that are placed together there. So I'm just gonna marquee select those and drag the uh, snippet over there. And it just appears right here as something that I can place later. So um, I can then, maybe I want to uh, place another ad kind of where those were taking up space. And uh, then I can come back to snippets and there's my items just waiting, and I can move those right there. Okay, so you can have more than one snippet. Um, it's like I said, it's just kind of a like a temporary holding bin. It, it might make certain um, uh, situations a little easier to deal with. Uh, you know, you need to move some items around, but you need to place some other stuff first. Uh, maybe you don't know where they're going to go yet, uh, but you know you need to move them off of the location where they are but you need to move them as a group. And that's the, that's the main thing. So uh, again, that's really new. Um, there's nothing to configure. It just appears there for you in our clipboard. Okay, uh, let's talk about signature management. Um, there's a few things that may confuse you about signatures. And um, one of the common questions that we get is you know what happens if I delete my signatures? Uh, that comes up in support sometimes. If you have a problem with signatures, uh, sometimes we'll tell you, well, just remove your signatures. And the initial feeling that everyone has is, um, you know, gosh, uh, am I going to lose my, my my pages? You know, um, and that's not the uh, the case. So let me do that. Actually, let me uh, select all of my signatures here, and I'm going to remove them. And you can see one by one it goes through and trashes all of those signatures. And uh, sure enough though, I come back to my, my plan and that is, uh, it's fine. There's no, it tells us I need to review my signatures because I don't have any. Uh, but all my pages are there just like they were before. So it's, it's no problem to, uh, to do that. Um, the signature markings that appear above the pages, of course, are gone. 
lets us know that we don't have any. So let's go back to our, our signatures item here. Now, a new item is that we, uh, we list here for you a warning and tells us how many pages are, are not in signatures. So we could manually add signatures if we want, but uh, typically uh, you should take advantage of the auto signature. And so let's, um, let's make a four page cover and then 16 page signatures and create those. And you can see that it goes through and it, uh, it makes those for us automatically. A new feature that we've added is the ability to uh, shuffle the signatures based on just dragging a preview. So you can see that we've now got a tool tip that tells us the signature name and the range of pages. And if I want to move this one down a little bit, I can just simply uh, pick up the preview and slide it down. So that, uh, that might come in handy. Okay. You might also want to swap some signatures. So rather than try and drag those, which might be a couple step process, you can select the two that you want to swap and select that new item here in the actions menu, and that will swap them for you. Okay. So we hope that that's, that that's useful. You can remove signatures from here. And again, this is only moving the signatures. Okay. We are not doing anything that would affect the pages underneath. You can see that I have some empty space here now. Okay, let's just take a look back at our plan and see what we're looking at. Okay, we've got empty space here and I can click that empty space in the preview and I can now create the signatures here. It knows which are missing and how it should fill them out uh, or I can clear them all and re-signature. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and create signatures. And you can see that it's um, just like auto signature, it's decided uh, how to fill those spaces in the best way. Again, based on our, uh, the holes that were there and our previous setting of 16 pages. And you can see that back at the plan, we've got our SIG 7, which was at the front, um, SIG 2, you know, so we did some crazy stuff with the signatures, but, uh, and typically you'd want to rename those things, but that's, uh, that's all been done the way we specified it in our, our area there. And we can also, uh, edit straight from here. We go edit signature from that preview in the plan. and It'll take us right back here where we can adjust those things. Now let's talk about an item that you might not have seen before, and that's in our, our plan details. Under advanced plan actions, there's something called uh, check plan for errors. Now this is something that it can come in very handy, especially if you have a large plan. If you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of things placed on your plan, it's possible that you might have some overset uh, editorials, you might have a, a coverage conflict somewhere where maybe you, you've placed a, um, an ad on a story and it didn't reflow, um, you know, various things that just might be hard to really detect, but will cause you problems uh, later on, especially when you, you move into producing the plan. So there's an item here called check plan for errors. And it just does a quick, you know, sort of sanity check on, on what you've done. And it tells me here that I, I have a problem with coverage and it tells me what, uh, what page that's on. Um, it also checks for um, the region problems, like I said, overset stories and items beyond a, a page count. So it tells me what page it's on. And sure enough, I go to page 16 and there's a page status coverage conflict. 
And sure enough, I've got an ad uh, placed on top of an editorial, uh, which was um, not set to automatically reflow. And uh, I move that, that uh, error goes away, and I can then come back in, and just to be sure, I can rerun that, and it tells me that everything is good. So uh, it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing, especially, I, I would say, on a large plan uh, where it is maybe easy to overlook uh, some types of, of problems like that. Uh, obviously, that could be a big problem in production, so it's a, it's a good thing to, to get in the habit of, of doing. All right, and our, our last topic for today is uh, something that it, it's so small you might not even have noticed, but we, it's a relatively new feature, and that's up at the top we now have a pagination widget. And so just like in the ads view, when we limit you to seeing 75 ads in one screen and we let you page through older results, same thing happens here. So we can now uh, limit this to the number of pages that you want to see. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look at how that's configured. If we look at pages one to 100, you can see that the number is correct down here. It only goes to 100. Switch to the next tab over, and you see the remaining pages. Uh, if you prefer to see all of them, you can still do that. It's just not the default anymore. Okay. We've put this in uh, really for performance reasons. Um, when you're looking at a very large plan, uh, it can just be uh, cumbersome in the browser. It can it can just take a while if you've got you know thumbnails on on every page, and so to speed that up, we we've put this in here. Uh, 100 is the default, but it might not be what you want. So you can go uh, up to the little gear icon here and go to Plan Display Settings, okay, and it's right here, pages per screen. So let's say we want to break it up by uh, 50 pages. Just make that change there. And you'll need to click the book plan in order to uh, refresh the, the book plan fully and see the new uh, pagination. But there it is. It's uh, 1 to 50. And you can see that it's, it's made that into smaller chunks now. And again, I can scroll through those and again, go to all uh, if you need. So. Uh, I would we'd highly recommend that you you um, get used to using this feature, um, set it at whatever is a comfortable value for you. But we we really feel that that will help the plans feel a lot uh, snappier for you and uh, uh, really help with with redrawing. Okay, so um, those are our topics for today. We did have some some questions that came up, so. Uh, we have uh, one question is, uh, well, actually a, a request, which is you need to add a densitometer tool. Um, that's something that we, uh, we definitely would consider. Um, we, in conjunction with our soft proofing, which is uh, yet another option, and, and it can be tied into the image management. Uh, I didn't show you that today. But if you do have uh, soft proofing uh, enabled, uh, there is a, uh, a densitometer option. So that can be done um, through that. And the other thing is that, you know, we've, we've looked at, at just the possibility of implementing something like that in that, that main uh, preview screen for images. So uh, I'll talk more with the other developers and uh, see, you know, what the status of that is, if that's something still being considered. Um, but uh, just to show you here under actions, there, there is this um, ability to soft proof a file. And that's a, it's a Java applet that loads. It's, um, you know, it's something that, uh, again, it's kind of another option. Um, I actually don't have Java on this, loaded in this browser, so I won't show you. But it, it's a whole other screen that, that opens up. Uh, the next question is, uh, about snippets, and um, let's get back to that screen here. So let's make a snippet and drag it over. Okay. 
And the question is, uh, if you move the snippets, uh, if you move something into snippets, is there any way to simply delete the files out of the snippets uh, without having to put it back on the map? And the question is, or the answer is right now, uh, no, it's, it's kind of expecting that you'll you know, move them back uh, onto the map somewhere. So um, if you'll notice, uh, I had an editorial and an ad in my snippet and they don't appear on the regular ads and editorials uh, clipboard. So I'm gonna move this back. And you know, really the way it is right now is if you, if you wanted to just return those to the clipboard, you would then just need to drag them one at a time over either your, your ad uh, or your editorial. I'm sorry. So you can drag those over and um, you can just drag them straight into the clipboard. It doesn't matter what you have selected, um, and it will put it. It'll file it back into the ads and editorials. So right now, no. Um, but I, I can talk to the developers about that and see if we can can do something with that. And uh, actually, another good question about snippets, and that is, um, how do you know what's in the snippet? Um, right now, there's not. A way to rename them, but I believe that that has already um, already been asked for. So uh, I'll have to check and see if that's in development yet. But I know that that has has come up. Obviously, if you have uh, more than one or two, uh, it would be hard to figure out what what exactly they are. So. Uh, and then the question is, can you can you snip multiple rows and uh, you should be able, you know, whatever you can select in, uh, sorry about that, uh, whatever you can manage to select uh, together. So in this case, uh, I was able <clears throat> to select those three items through a marquee and drag those over. So, you know, however you're able to select things on the plan, as long as you can get them selected, uh, you can move them over. All right, well, it looks like uh, that's our questions for today. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, like I said, if you have any, uh, any other questions that come up later, uh, feel free to ask us if you'd like to suggest something for the next month uh, webinar, please let us know. We'd be happy to uh, add that to our, uh, our collection and uh, our agenda for next month. So thank you, and uh, we hope to see you again in September.